when we think of famous assassinations and especially famous or notable assassinations of the 1960s, uh, John Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, we've seen these kind of theories crop up around those killings as well. Is it your uh, is it your theory that these are all related conspiracies? Well, I, I haven't looked heavily into any of the other conspiracies except <clears throat> the Robert Kennedy one. Mm -hmm. I also represent Sirhan. But it's only based on evidence and factual evidence mm -hmm. that I've come to these conclusions. It's not a theory. Right. We have, we have uh, depositional w witness uh, evidence. We had a, a trial in the case of the King mm -hmm. the assassination. We tried a case for 30 days with 70 witnesses. Yeah. That was in 1999. Uh -huh. And 16 years after that, we then have a, un, uncovered a, a very powerful amount of facts that show that James was innocent and that, in fact, it was a government operation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you want to sort of step back and put these, these events in, in some context. Uh, the, the government was very worried about uh, what Martin Luther King Jr. was doing. Uh, for, through, for most of his professional career, they had become particularly worried by the late 1960s, by the change in his work and the change in the focus. Yes, Stephen. Um, you know, I looked through Dr. Pepper's book, especially the last one, um, The Plot to Kill King, mm -hmm. through a legal lens, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I do a fair amount of appellate work, which means brief work. Right. I love doing it. And for me, the test is the evidence. Not only has Dr. Pepper amassed a considerable body of what we call circumstantial evidence, mm -hmm. but he has also developed a considerable body of direct evidence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the form of the son, um, Ron um, Atkins, of the father, Russell Atkins, where the assassination was planned at the home. So Dr. Pepper has accumulated not only direct evidence through the testimony of the son mm -hmm. that the murder was planned at, the, at his father and the family home, but the connection between Clyde Tolson, who was the number two man in the FBI next to J. Edgar Hoover, 